Good morning and welcome to the pastor's midweek message. It seems like an awful lot of people are being personally impacted by COVID-19. At session meeting last week, some of our leaders were telling their stories. A daughter, a cousin, a close friend. It makes the pandemic very real. The father of a granddaughter's boyfriend tested positive. That put a scare in our family. Our granddaughter and her parents both all tested negative, but they're still quarantined. Our lawn service guy in Orange Park and his son both contracted the virus and both were quite sick for uh, a, a number of rough days. They are okay now and back to work, but the father is dealing with the possibility of long-term lung damage. These are common enough stories and they make me hope all the more fervently that you are safe and well. Here's a word of encouragement from the prophet Isaiah. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I'm amazed at how often the scriptures speak of peace. Through the ages and in all circumstances, it seems, the need for a calm spirit, the need to be reminded of God's presence and God's care, seems always to be with us. Let us pray. Gracious God, calm our spirits, gentle us in the face of adversity, keep our minds stayed on you. Amen. Our Up the River story for today is titled, Horseback Riding. Up the river is populated by black bears, ghosts, rattlesnakes, wampus cats, and beautiful girls. But hooking up with any of these generally requires getting out of sight of the house. Unless, of course, you live up on sunburst. All that stuff happens inside of the house if you live up on sunburst. Closer into our house and more available for daily adventure, is horseback riding. At one stage in his life, my dad was a horse trader, which meant there were horses in the barn for my brothers and me to ride. These were work horses, not saddle horses. They knew how to pull plows and wagons and sleds and things, and they could fetch a log the size of a train car down the mountainside like it was nothing. But put a 10 year old Wrangler on their backs and these horses would lose perspective, go a little crazy, which was good because we always wanted to find out just how much vinegar the horse had in him. Tourists over at Maggie Valley rode horses at the dude ranch, paid money and, sell, and sent real pretty on a fancy saddle, on a lazy, underfed, almost a horse that went from here to there while taking a nap. My brothers and I never had much interest in horses that just went. We liked it when they went a little crazy. One day we decided to ride the new horse in the barn. This was a young, strong, reddish looking beast my dad called the Big Roan. I didn't know what a roan was, but it sounded like mischief to me. Little brother drew the short straw and won the privilege of riding first. He climbed on board that horse and, and the horse reared up and took off in a manner granddad would describe as hell bent for leather. Horse headed straight for a clump of apple trees with long hanging limbs. Terry was an accomplished rider 
and he was working that horse like a pro trying to turn him. Now, turning a horse is not a complicated operation. Horses understand that when a rider pulls the reins to the right, they're supposed to turn left. But this horse wasn't getting the message. He had his eye on the apple trees and those low hanging branches and he had this unwelcome rider on his back. This was one time I wished we had one of them saddles they have over at the dude ranch. As horse and rider went into the scruff, I saw Terry lean way over to the side, which, which was the right thing to do under the circumstances. But riding bareback and leaning over and dodging three limbs and trying to turn a horse traveling at a high rate of speed, well, that's, you know, kind of tricky. Sure enough, Terry was unseated by a tree limb just about the time the horse got the message that he was supposed to turn. And boy, did that horse turn. 180 degrees. So by the time Terry was on the ground, the horse was coming back at him. For an ugly moment, horse and rider shared the same patch of real estate with brother Terry getting the short end of the stick. A 900 pound horse trampling on an eight year old ain't pretty. The big roan stampeded on down the hill another mile or so and then he slowed down to a casual walk as he returned to the barn. It was the first time and the only time I saw a horse smirk. Terry had seriously mangled his foot and he had a pump knot on his head so high he would have to stand on his tiptoes to scratch it. His injuries wasn't all that bad, but we knew we wouldn't be able to hide it from mom and dad. Did I mention that we were not allowed to ride the horses? While mama was nursing his swollen head and trying to stop the bleeding of his foot, dad was checking to see if the ankle was broken. Ray and I, in the meantime, were explaining what happened. We told him we were playing hide and seek and Terry fell out of the corn crib. Mother didn't buy it. It makes you wonder, don't it? Why would your own mother not believe your story? It's no wonder kids have a jaundiced view of their parents. They never believe a thing we say. Thanks for listening.